welcome everyone to this talk. I'm Yi Qing, and this is my teammate Ruo Yu. Uh, we are from Instabase. Uh, so today we will discuss about uh, deploying uh, Ray on an air-gapped Kubernetes cluster with enterprise security. Uh, so this is today's agenda. So uh, in the first section, we will do an introduction. Uh, what is Instabase? And we want to do a quick recap of Ray's key features uh, that for our business. Also, we want to talk about how we use Ray at Instabase. And in the next section, we want to talk about some unique, uh, unique challenges of air-gapped Ray deployment in, uh, with tight security control. And in the third part, uh, I will hand over to Roy Yu to discuss some architecture and implementation details, how we make this happen. And at the uh, last section, I will do a live demo uh, directly into our uh, environment and show uh, how we train the model and how we serve the model. Uh, and if time allows, we will do a Q&A. So, okay, so here is the first section. Uh, what is things the base? So Instabase provides a platform for building, running, and distribute elect, uh, intelligent solutions that can process any type of input, uh, execute some uh, custom business logic, facilitate human review at every step, and integrate with industry-specific system to support some business decisions. So one of the use case for us, as we can show from, as we can see from here, is the mortgage lending. So traditionally, mortgage lending is a very, very uh, time-consuming process. Uh, so there are many, many steps in the middle. For example, we need some officer, uh, officer to review uh, each cases, and there are a lot of documents. We need like human to classify and validate these documents, right? So one of our use case, uh, basically we allow the customer to build an automation workflow for the unstructured data with many advanced machine learning model to do these tasks for humans, for example, classification, extraction, and this helps reduce the human effort dramatically. So as we discussed before, or as we can see from that diagram, right? So ML really uh, like plays a very, very important role uh, at Instabase. So we provide the capability to the non-technical user to fine tune the model uh, to base on their specific type of document no matter it is structured or unstructured data. So usually like the people work for all those like banks or some uh, firms, they don't know technology, they don't write code, right? So we really need to like make these machine learning technique to be accessible to these non-technical users. Uh, yeah, so with that, we basically build some model training and solution builder apps. Uh, these help the user to create and scale the model to like solve their unique business problems. And the infra for the model training service is powered by Ray, which I will cover in the next uh, later. So now let's talk about some key features that Ray brings to the table. So first of all, it has distributed execution. These allow us to execute tasks seamlessly across a cluster of machines. So once we train a model, we can really scale it. Uh, we can really scale the model training workload uh, like across multiple GPU nodes. Uh, and secondly, Ray manages cluster resource like CPU, memory, and GPUs uh, with efficiency and precision. Also, it's very important to mention that it uh, brings us visibility. It has built-in support uh, to have the really good metrics about all the hardware resources and even for the GPUs. And certainly, it provides fault tolerance. If a worker node died, we can easily recover that worker node. Uh, and Ray is able to schedule tasks to the worker node based on their specific resource requirement and even customer resource. And later, my colleague Roy you will talk about how we really optimize the task scheduling, uh, use the customer resource. And these give us a lot of, a lot of flexibility to schedule the task. So now I want to introduce how we use Ray. So as we can see uh, from the diagram that on the right side, uh, usually the, the user uh, like use the ML Studio to submit a model training task. And that one talked to the API server at Instabase through an HTTP. And the API server used the Ray job submission client to submit that job to the Ray head. Uh, Ray head itself is a CPU node. 
And uh, it also, connect, uh, in the Ray cluster, we also have multiple GPU node. So the Ray head will schedule uh, the task to the Ray worker based on the specific like hardware resource for the, or customer resource definition for this, uh, for this job. And also the Ray head and the Ray worker like keep exporting all those like metrics, hardware metrics, uh, usage, like logging to our internal monitoring and logging service. Also, the Ray worker during the model training, it tried to like upload and download the model artifacts from the file service. And all those like communication between service and within Ray cluster, we do have it like encrypted. And also, one of the use cases, how to utilize those GPU chip like efficiently, right? Because GPU are really, really expensive. So we do have like internal uh, like library to squeeze two models into one GPU to like this is especially useful for those small models. And we use the Ray Torch Trainer and Ray Tune to like train large model across multiple GPUs. And this uh, is really easy. It's already handled by uh, Ray uh, Air library. So uh, this is basically how we uh, make good use of these GPUs. Uh, and also for the training observability part, we uh, raise support to export all those metrics to the Grafana and uh, to the Prometheus. So we basically uh, take advantage of that feature and also we uh, do some like internal optimization to export all those logs to the low key so we can easily keep track of those model training logs. And also we surface that log to the ML Studio so the non-technical user really know what happened uh, in each step. So this is how we use Ray. Uh, so in the next section, I want to talk about some unique challenges. So as we navigate the evolving landscape of uh, distributed computing, uh, one of the challenge we often encounter is the limitation imposed by the air-gapped system. So now what do I mean by air-gapped? Uh, these are the system isolated from the uh, public internet, right? And while this isolation indeed serve a purpose, it brings some unique challenges with it. So if you work with or within a large enterprise, you'd probably no stranger to all those uh, like long list of security protocols and compliance checks. And these rules aren't just guidelines, they are often legal requirements. And systems in such secure environment usually have access to an internal network and Docker registry, but these are tightly controlled and isolated from the unsecured like public internet, right? Uh, and in addition, the customer have tight permission control for the distributed system. And for example, the official way that we um, like browse from the Ray website is to use Kubernetes to deploy Ray on a Kubernetes cluster. But here is, uh, comes with a challenge uh, because deploying Ray in Kubernetes with Kubray, which is the official way, needs a customer resource definition, CRD. So this one requires cluster-wide permission. But however, usually the enterprise uh, customer will not give the platform permission to install CRD. So with this, we basically cannot use Kubray auto scaling and some other Kubray features because we cannot use Kubray. So we have another approach to do auto scaling, uh, which we will cover later in this talk. Uh, so most notably, this air gap system have limited access to those uh, cloud-based uh, debugging and uh, monitoring tools. And these tools are crucial for quickly and effective debugging. So this lack of access can make the debugging really challenging. So in addition, this application are often composed of multiple components and each one running in a separate environment. And the traditional debugging tool is really hard to understand the data flow between the components. So between the resource limitation of air gap systems and the inherent complexity of distributed applications, debugging becomes a considerably like, challenging task. And in the coming slides, we will explore some strategies that we did to mitigate these challenges. So with that, I will hand over to my colleague Roy Yu to deep dive into Ray integrations at Instabase. 
Okay, next I will walk through some implementation detail. Um, as Yiching mentioned, uh, air-gapped uh, environment have a lot of uh, challenge to deploy. Um, so first of all, without uh, Kubernetes to manage the cluster, uh, we have to rely on some native Kubernetes features to manage the cluster. Um, we deploy rehead and reworker using different uh, deployment, but the deployment sequence matters. So what we did is we used init container inside the reworker, and the init container will always wait for the rehead to start, and then it uh, starts a reworker so that the worker can register itself correctly with the rehead. And uh, if anything goes wrong with the rehead and reworker, we rely on the Kubernetes readiness and the liveness health check to detect those failures. In rehead, we use the re-health check. It, it checks the GCS server, whether it's up or, or down. And uh, in the worker, we use the re -lead health check API. The re -lead will um, continuously communicate with the rehead, and if the communication lost um, for a certain timeout, the health check will fail, and Kubernetes will detect that and uh, restart the real worker until it, it is able to reconnect with the head. Also, we implement auto-scaling. Um, we use a combination of permissive stats and some in-house uh, uh, auto-scaler controller to, to implement this. So as, show, as shown in the diagram below, we have a matrix that uh, uh, defined over 30 minutes, like for last 30 minutes, is there any jobs running in the re cluster? Um, if it's not, we scale down as showing in the in the diagram, uh, in, in, in the gra graph. And when there's new jobs submitted, we can uh, scale back up the worker. And next I will uh, talk about how do we run the training jobs. Um, by the way, what, what, what we are training is not large language model, it's like pre-GPT, it's mostly BERT, uh, fine-tuning jobs. Um, yeah, because it's an uh, uh, air-gapped uh, environment, we have to build all the dependencies into the container and ship it to the customer. And when we run the job, we submitted um, the training uh, script as a re-job into in the rehead, and the rehead will have a main process that runs the job and use the re-API to distribute these uh, computations to the uh, different re-workers. And re have a very interesting feature called customer resources. Uh, we use it very smart way. We used to use it to define a customer resource called queue size. So usually for the computation cluster, uh, is you cannot just let people submit all kinds of jobs. It will easily get overloaded. And um, we don't want to build a custom queue in front of Ray. So we use a, a customer resource. We define customer resource based on the amount of memory in the Ray head and a certain number, like how many jobs we can accept. And uh, for each job we submit to Ray head, it will consume one token from the total queue size. Um, also, in our uh, platform, we have a different platform service. Um, for example, the observability, we have a set of service, Jagger, Prometheus, Loki. Um, those are for logs and, uh, and traces. And uh, we have uh, the database and the file system. Um, so in the read job, we, we have a script on the uh, functions to integrate with all the platform level services. So this offers uh, fully observability into the re-training jobs. So for e each training job, we have a, a trace ID, and using that trace ID, we can draw and ad aggregate all the traces from Jaeger, Permissius, and logs from Loki, and the metadata from the database and the, and the artifacts from the file system. Um, so this, all this aggregate information, we also surface to the customer. So when they run the job uh, in the UI, they can have a holistic view of uh, what, uh, what their job is doing. Also, uh, really helps us a lot to handle failures. Um, when we run the training job, um, there are many, many times 
depend on the, the size of the model or the size of input, um, it will run out of memory or crash in, in certain ways. Um, and really help us a lot to monitor those process. In our legacy system, it was very painful uh, to, uh, to, to debug uh, all, the, uh, all the process crash. We have to log into the machine and, and examine the log and examine the, uh, the uh, process trace. But with Ray, it consist, uh, consist, uh, continuously monitors the memory footprint. And if there's any error, like out of memory error, uh, the Ray will detect, catch that, and the surface it into the driver driver's uh, script. And uh, in the driver script, we will store all the information into the, into the database, and uh, the user can see it immediately, like I show in the bottom. Um, they can immediately know their job failed due to out of memory. And at Instabase, we also have a, sur a, surf a service mesh implemented using Envoy. So it helps us to configure the, the network also to, uh, for network security, encrypt the traffic, and also do some smart load balancing inside, uh, the, inside the whole cluster. And uh, our re cluster also integrate into this uh, service mesh and all the traffic between Ray and other platform service is fully encrypted. Also, the, the routing is like configurable using some smart algorithm. To further tighten down the security within a Ray cluster, we also implement uh, TLS connections between Ray head and Ray worker. Um, a challenging here is that Ray head and Ray worker often uh, communicate using the pod IP. Um, and to sign a certificate for dynamic POC IP is pretty hard to manage. So what we came up with is, uh, is that we use an innate container to sign a self-signed certificate every time before the re cluster starts. And the self-signed certificate will use the pod IP that dynamically generated by the Kubernetes. And with that certificate, the rehead and reworker can establish um, TLS connection. And all this work we have documented very thoroughly, and uh, we also contribute to the re document as well. Okay, I will hand back to Yiching for an end to end demo. Uh, yes, so uh, now let's do a live demo uh, into our environment. Uh, so first of all, this is uh, basically what Instabase looks like. Uh, this is the UI for Instabase. And let's head over to uh, the app that we were used today, which we called Solution Builder. Um, so first of all, let me give you some, uh, some high level about this demo. So basically, we will uh, use uh, uh, the Ray uh, as the infrastructure to train a model, right? Then uh, also we want to show that we have some uh, in-house like annotation too. So how these uh, work with the Ray cluster. And uh, during the process, the Ray will surface like a lot of logs or metrics to the observability tool. Then uh, in the end, we basically want to run the trained model uh, and to really uh, get some predictions. So first of all, I already created this uh, project, but this is really easy to create, just like uh, create a folder. Uh, just to save some time, I already upload uh, these paste stubs. So first of all, let's take a look at the paste stub. Uh, so as we can see, it's uh, pretty like unstructured. Uh, let's also take a look at this one. Uh, And this one is just a scan copy um, of a paste up from Intuit. Uh, by the way, all these uh, PDFs are like generated, uh, not, not, not a real document. So uh, as we consider these as unstructured data here. So now let's uh, use this file to create an annotation set. So to do that, I just need to click this button. Um, so I pre-created 
these uh, two annotation set based on the labels for this document. One is Intuit, one is from ADP. Um, so let's open up the ADP one. Uh, so as we can see from here, all the documents with the green dots are already annotated, but I like leave two uh, so I can annotate it uh, here, lively. So all we need to do is uh, like just select this uh, name field and I can mark this as annotated. And same as this one, all we need to do is just select this uh, name and mark as annotated. Okay, so we have all the like documents annotated here. So what to do next? Let's go back to the Solution Builder project. Um, let's go back here. Let's go to the models. Uh, the model is uh, pretty easy to, I just need to create new, to create a new model project, but just to save some time here, I already created a model. So let's open it up. So this one, uh, this app is a new app. We call it Machine Learning Studio. This is the app that we use to train a model. So behind this app, the infrastructure is uh, Ray. So we use Ray job to train a job. So let's click the train button. Uh, this is a brand new model. We haven't trained anything yet. Uh, so here we can select different base models. So for now, let's just use the default one. Uh, we basically have some uh, auto like suggestion for the user, uh, and we also have like auto suggestion for all the parameters. Uh, so since I'm a non-technical user, I act as a non-technical user. So I just train the model with the default value. And also, I want to showcase that uh, here in the advanced hyperparameters the user can choose different GPU allocation mode. So as I introduced earlier, the partial one, basically we can squeeze multiple mod, uh, model training jobs into one GPU if the model is relatively small. And the multi-GPU one, we use the Ray Torch Trainer and the Ray Tune to like, distribute the model training job across multiple GPUs. So here we can see the job is started. Um, so maybe we can head over to the uh, to the Grafana. So here is the uh, the dashboard for the Ray uh, training job. Uh, so as we can see from here, there is new tasks comes in. Uh, we use this to scale uh, to scale the GPU node. Actually, we can take a look at uh, maybe a longer time, so we can really uh, tell that. Uh, so here, really a small fraction of time we have GPU deployed because there is uh, tasks coming, as I show from here. So one task coming, we scale the GPU up. Uh, then there's some node to process this uh, GPU training job. Then after 30 minutes, if there's no jobs coming, we scale down the GPU node. Uh, so since uh, the model where train, training will take some time, so maybe I can just use, uh, show you guys what is the trained model looks like. Uh, so let's take a look at this one. I have multiple training jobs. Uh, if we build a detail, it will have all the metrics showing this app. And we also have logs. The user can use this to track like each step of the model training status. And in the Grafana, uh, in the Grafana tool, we have this integrate with uh, Loki. The user can use the Loki, uh, Loki service to track uh, there will be a trace ID, so they can also link to the uh, Jaeger to trace each uh, like request. So I won't show here, but uh, okay. So so let's take a look if the model training is finished.
uh, I think it still got trained. So maybe let's just take a look at the trained model. Uh, for example, we have uh, like three versions of the Intuit model, right? So let's just randomly choose one. Um, so let's run maybe two documents. We can take a look. Yeah, I don't think the, during the demo, the, the node will be scaled down because we don't have like 30 minutes uh, time to wait for it to scale down. But based on the historical uh, data, we can really see that the node will be scaled down. Um, so we can take a look at the refiner. So once the job finish uh, the, the model inferencing, it will generate some document um, so we can really, uh, the user can just open it up in this, in this app. Uh, maybe let's just wait until the, the job finish training. Usually uh, this one um, probably will take some time because there are some other users also use the platform right now. Uh, and one more thing I want to show up is uh, here. So once we finish, uh, like check the result for this document, we have a flow uh, app in this solution builder. With this, we can uh, basically generate some new uh, workflows and also we can build uh, from scratch. So this can let the user to build the workflow uh, to process this kind of document. Uh, and as we can see from here, we can create, for example, uh, let's select these two annotation sets. Oh, it looks like our job is running right now. Uh, so we have also classification model. So with this, we can really build like a workflow. So usually the first step is the user uploads a huge amount of document, right? First of all, we want to train a relatively large classification model. So we know like which, mo uh, which document is most likely which form. Then we use the extraction model. So extraction model, we can make a lot of annotations. So it can train and extract the uh, like corresponding field to the user. Uh, and let's take a look at the output set. So these are the two documents that being generated. So let's take a look at the models. Uh, so here is basically uh, the model that we just run. Uh, yeah, so I think the time is over. Um, that's the demo. Uh, also, uh, so here, let me give just one more minute. Um, so this is our new product. Uh, we call it AI Hub. So uh, this AI Hub uses some uh, advanced large language model to analyze your document. And it offers uh, immediate data interpretation, content summarization, and even more you can build a workflow, just like I showed before, to automate the entire process. The AI Hub where it converts like static and unstructured data into actionable insight. And it also can like enhance efficiency and decision making during the like business process. 
And we are currently working on use Rayserv to serve the large language model for this product. Uh, yeah, so, so that's it for the talk. Um, I, yeah, that's it. Thank you, thank you guys. <laughs>